In today's video, I'm excited to provide an update on Immunoprecise Antibodies, but the company has a new name. It is now MindWalk Holdings Corp, and they have a new ticker. It is HYFT, and this one's done pretty well. In the last week, it's up by 18%, and as a reminder, the stock is up an incredible 320% so far this year. So you, you might remember it as IPA, or Immunoprecise Antibodies, but now they have a new brand, MindWalk AI. I'll leave a link for you in the description. So that now they have MindWalk, which is a new unified brand for IPA and its subsidiaries. This usually means they mean business because they now have a, have a, have a portfolio of companies and of brands. And this is pretty good because now everything is under an umbrella. They've also had some recent news. So the stock has done really well this year because they've been able to deliver meaningful news. If we have a look here, there's even more. In September, they've been pretty busy. They have a number of news releases here. On the 10th, they tell us that they've reported their financial results and business highlights for the first quarter of 2026. And that is on September 15th of 2025. Then they reported the numbers. Okay. And then on the 15th, they also announced record $7.6 million quarterly revenue, 45% growth, margin expansion, narrow losses. But more importantly, the reason why the stock's doing well right now is this news release. MindWalk advanced AI design GLP-1 program with first in class dual pathway regimen for aging and longevity. This company has done really well because let's go back to their chart. As we talked about in the last week, the stock has done really well, like 18% since that news is out. Um, look here to the one month, the stock is having a little bit of a dip. So this is where we have to ask ourselves whether the reason why we originally entered the stock is still the reason why we're still in. Because if we look here to a higher time frame, what's basically happening is something called a cup and handle pattern where we have a cup, we have a handle, and now we have to have, make a decision. The chart is going to decide whether it's going to go higher or go lower. Put another way, we're going to zoom out one more time and have a look here at our monthly chart because this is the one that we used. And honestly, it worked out really well. It looks like yeah, the stock has advanced a lot since we put out our first video. What we often talk about is that price precedes volume. So right here, we know that there was a ton of volume and that was right near the low. The stock traded, traded as low as 39 cents. After that, we can see that volume did come back. So we're getting, as of right now, we're hitting resistance. We're backing off. What could happen after we back off? Well, that's to be determined. As I look a little bit closer, what I note here is that we have these upper wicks. This upper wick right here, I can go to a log scale, make it a little bit easier to see. So percent-wise, the sell-off right here was actually more dramatic. You can see that we advance dramatically, but then we fall back below. We actually form one red candle after that. And again, I'm not going to say that history is going to repeat itself per perfectly here because we had a lot of volume on the first move. But after that short-term correction, the stock did carve out a, a bottom and advance higher. We would expect to find sellers right here on the 50 moving average as well. So what I like to see is that the stock is actually correcting on what I would look at as a light volume, which means that it's a low volume sell-off, which is good. So the technical chart is actually quite good. It's digesting what used to be resistance going all the way back to, this is quite a long time ago now, 2018, 2019, looking down to these key relative lows right here. So the chart looks like it's really going to be uh, up to uh, the next couple of quarters because they just reported their quarterly numbers, which means we're going to get three more candles. If the company is able to deliver on more progressively bullish news like they have here, this is really good. Remember, they had some huge news on the last update we had. So uh, IPA and global biotech leader enter into an eight to ten million dollar partnership for the development of novel cancer therapeutics. Remember that? Let's briefly look at that, and then we'll look at the news for right now. That's back in March. So they announced a, a really big update, and then they got a big partnership. Um, who was this with? Mm, so it's going to span 18 to 24 months. So remember, it's only been about six months since March. So from March until now, what I'm reading here is that the agreement valued at an initial $8 million with the potential to expand to 10 is based on 18 to 24 months. This is one more iron in the fire that could actually bear some fruit in the next quarter here, or maybe in the next quarterly report. This partnership underscores the power of combining AI-driven discovery with the advanced antibody engineering. 
said Dr. Jennifer Bath, CEO of Immunoprecise Antibodies. And I would kind of agree because they're calling it Lens AI. And as of right now, they think that it warrants putting everything under an umbrella or a patent. Um, sorry, which basically means uh, like a holding company here. That's the way I read it. A unified brand for IPA and its subsidiaries. So this appears like it's a holding company, which is excellent because it has a portfolio. All right, let's go to here. Um, what's also an interesting is that this company is actually getting picked up here again, at least by the Globe and Mail. That's the Canadian equivalent of the Wall Street Journal. So it's important that people actually read the news. And that's part of the reason why companies engage uh, people like me to go read their news and to get investors is because there's actually some really good stories out there. It's just uh, sometimes high, hard to find all of the uh, all of the uh, the good ones when there's uh, it's like a needle in a haystack. There's there's just so many stocks out there that um, it's hard to keep up with everything. Sorry, we'll go through this one in a moment. This one go here goes back to the 15th of September. We'll, we'll read this one first here. Why? Uh, it just looks like it's a lot more notable. Uh, here we go. Uh, companies, company builds on earlier GLP one success with breakthrough AI led insights into aging biology. A lot of companies use the word AI. The chart is up by hundreds of percent so far this year. So again, I'll take one more moment here to just show you the chart because, uh, year to date, it's up by 320%. Um, when investors vote and they don't like what they see, charts don't usually digest the moves that well. Like I said, in the last week with new news, it's up by another 20%. I would call that a pop flag, a pop flag, and it's digesting the move for the next ramp. What it really comes down to is, like I said, is the reasons why the chart or the company could actually price discover higher. Well, I showed you a previous uh, previous announcement they had where it takes 18 to 24 months. It's only been six. So if they have more than one thing they're working on and the market is liking this, so there's the news and there's the reaction to the news. This GLP-1 trend is right, right on trend right now. It's very hot. People really like it. And um, let's read the release now. All right. No, uh, no, no, no more, uh, no more time to wait. HYFT driven technology supports co-administration of MindWatch proprietary companion therapeutic with the company's GLP-1 receptor uh, agonist. I'm going to uh, just apologize ahead of time because uh, a lot of these words are above my pay grade and I might mispronounce them. Here's the key takeaways. Expansion builds directly on MindWalk's previously announced GLP-1 IRA success. Perfect. Lens AI identifies a complementary longevity link pathway and guides a proprietary companion therapeutic design to be administered alongside MindWalk's GLP I, sorry, IRAs. This basically sounds like it's a supplement to enhance or to again, maybe get rid of some of the side effects or to give you some longevity because that's what the headline says right here. It's a dual pathway regimen for aging and longevity. Um, I think people like both of those things. <laughs> Being alive and living well. Um, yeah, I happen to think people like that. I like that. Um, a regimen in first class of the company's knowledge and engineered for preventative chronic use. Okay. Um, strategy aims to enhance efficacy, durability, and long-term adherence. Okay. Platform enables re reputable in silico, in silico uh, design and optimization and combination therapeutics in high growth markets. Like what? Like GLP-1. GLP-1 is very, 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 it's a very strong trend. If we look at some of those stocks, like let's just go here to Eli Lilly. Let's look at the big dog. Eli Lilly or Novo Nordic. Why? They're just, they're huge companies. So again, a subdivision, a small idea, right? A, uh, a YOLO for these companies is like very big. And right now, it's not that these companies aren't doing well. It's that they need new ways to innovate. They're trying to do oral. They're trying to do a few different things, but there's no guaranteed winner right now. So I think, again, I think that if there's a way for one of these companies to say that our product is roughly the same, we're very large, uh, each to our own, but that we have a little bit of a benefit or it doesn't really matter who sells it. If there's something that works for the GLP-1 sector, it should work for both. That's why I find this interesting. Bio native AI. I think it's part of the reason why they rebranded using HYFT. Again, looks like there's a registered trademark there. Mindwalk's patented first principles disco uh, discovery engine, Lens AI map conserved uh, biological patterns that link GLP 1 signaling to adaptive resilience in metabolism, inflammation balance, and cellular stress response. In parallel, Lens AI identified a complementary regulatory node 
kept undisclosed while validation and protecting activities proceed that interfaces with the least with these with these same longevity longevity related processes. The way that I read this, and I could be wrong, so I encourage you to read these on your own or to go to the website after. Again, the link will be in the description. Is that sometimes when you're doing drug discovery, you don't always know what you're going to discover. It's kind of like. Uh, <laughs> Uh, like Viagra. So its original use was not its intended outcome. So I just know that example because uh, I read it as a case study. So what I'm basically reading here is that through our AI or our lens AI, what we were able to do is to find some kind of advantage where through a similar pathway or regulatory node, again, kept undisclosed because they don't want to have people go copy it, they're able to find some kind of a benefit for longevity related processes. So aging, longevity, if there's a way to benefit people by, again, as a, uh, as a uh, ancillary way or a, uh, because we were already doing it just so happens, um, that would be very curious. Why? Well, this, this, it's expected to be $60 billion by 2030. That's a big market for it. So GLP IRA, uh, one RAs entirely in silico and positions the company to address the high growth longevity therapeutic mar market widely projected to exceed $60 billion by 2030. Yeah, that's a big dog. So they have a, uh, unlike traditional black box AI tools, Lens AI provides ex uh, explainability, biological traceability, and full lineage tracing design to support uh, regulatory review and AI informed decisions throughout discovery and deployment. And they got an eight to $10 million contract with a big company to do exactly this, GLP-1. So it's very curious. All right, let's move forward. Uh, this is the same release over here in the Globe and Mail. We can probably close that out. I like the fact that they have this uh, unified brand here. Um, why are they thinking for the future? And they got a uh, pretty big brand here. They got Talum, subsidiary of IPA, Biostrand, a sub, IPA. That's the main company. Our new name, our inspiration, Mindwalk draws its name from Darwin's thinking path, a daily loop sparking inspiration to disrupt. Oh, actually, I, I like this. <laughs> Thinking path, a daily loop. I've been thinking a lot about loops lately. Uh, a daily loop sparking inspiration to disrupt convention and define biology. The same mindset drives us. Rethink what's possible. Challenge the expected and solve complexity at its core. Born from the combined strengths of immuno immunoprecise antibodies, Biostrand, and Talum, MindWalk brings AI, data, and lab science together into a single biointelligent driven e uh, ecosystem designed to move faster, build to see more, engineered to create breakthroughs. Whoop! Investor news from IPA to HYT on the NASDAQ. That's right. So they've changed their, uh, their ticker here. We're officially transitioning to our new ticker. Woo! So there we go. Looks like the company's position for the future. And uh, last one here. Um, I normally don't go this long, but I'm, I'm just personally curious. So I'm going to read this last news release here too. They reported $7.6 million in quarterly revenue. That's pretty good. 45% growth, margin expansion, narrowed losses. That's good. And strengthen the balance sheet. So this is exactly what you want to see from a company that is spending money while they're growing to eventually spending less, but still growing. And then again, spending even less, but eventually getting some positive growth or some positive rent of revenue or earnings. First quarter highlights, revenue, uh, record revenue of $7.6 million. So this company is not that huge. If we go back here, right? IPA stock. Whoa, beautiful background here. Where's that? Mm, I'm not sure right now. All right, that's my uh, my momentum background. It's a uh, it's a plugin for Chrome. Anyways, going back to the stock here, it's only worth 87 million dollars. So 87 million dollars in a quarter, they did 7.6. That's pretty good. Net loss improved from uh, to three million versus four last year. So again, the company does still lose money, but this is where at the right time, if there is an actual discovery, there could be a huge payout. Supported by strong capital structure, a sharp focus on uh, scalable uh, opportunities, and a proven ability to execute, we believe Mindwalk is well positioned to deliver sustainable growth and long-term value. That's a good quote. Additional highlights include a uh, cash balance of $5 million at quarter end, plus 16.1 million in net proceeds from Netherlands uh, divesture. That's uh, that's pretty good. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the detail, details of that mean, but um, they have net proceeds. So I'm not sure what that means, but that's pretty good. That's $20 million when the company is worth, what, 78? Sorry, 87. There we go. Hmm. 
adjusted EBITDA loss of 1.4. So again, uh, on an on an adjusted basis, that doesn't look terrible. Why? Because the previous year was twice as bad. So they're getting really good traction, and uh, they're narrowing the losses, which is what they said in the highlight, uh, said in the in the head headline here, and strengthen their balance sheet. So that's pretty good. Recent corporate highlights: rebranding, introducing Mindwalk, uh, uniting immunoprecise antibodies, BioStrand, and Talum under cohesive identity. New Nasdaq. HIF technology. Well, it looks like they're planning some kind of pivot here. Why? Because they got it registered. So I think that's part of the reason for the pivot. Strategic divestiture. Completed sale of Netherlands operation generating 16.1 million in net proceeds to strengthen the balance sheet. Okay, so that basically means paying off some debt. Um, that's the way that I read it. That's good. They have a strong cash balance of 5 million as well, which means they're good for at least one quarter at their current burn. Um, and for EBITDA, like the, on, a, on an adjusted basis, that'd be the equivalent of three years. Um, De-risking biological developments, expansion uh, validation of Lens AI, showing pred uh, predictive ability for anti-drug, anti-antibody risk. Like I said, I'm going to mix some words up. I'm sorry. Um, helping partners accelerate programs and reduce costly late stage failures. CEO commentary. Let's listen to Dr. Jennifer Bath. Our, strength, our strong first quarter reflects robust project growth and improved operating efficiency, underscoring our com a competitive position, said Dr. Jennifer Bath, CEO of Mindwalk. The, divest the, the divestiture of Netherlands operations generated 16.1 million in proceeds, further strength strengthening our balance sheet and enabling us to sharpen focus on AI-driven initiatives. With a rebranding complete, we are advancing our transform transformation into fully integrated biointelligence company. I like that. Um, they're not stuffing the word AI in there. They actually have things that are artificially intelligent. Why? They're getting results too. Uh, during the quarter, we also advanced our uh, Dengue vac vaccine into preclinical uh, manufacturing and further validated our Lens AI platform to de-risk bio biologics uh, development for partners. Supported by a strong capital structure, a sharp focus on scalable opportunities, and a proven ability to execute, we believe MindWalk is well positioned to deliver sustainable growth and long-term value. I like that. So we went through the chart and we talked about that as well. And uh, we went through and looked at the news. So if you want to find out more about the company, again, you can find them under H Y F T on the NASDAQ. And then just for the audience, please just make sure to read the description for full disclosure details. With that said, thank you very much for tuning in today. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thanks again.